Hey, it's Entheogen, and welcome back to Stratagen, Age of Empires. When we left off last time, well, first of all, you should know that this rec this commentary is being recorded after the fact, as is obvious from the fact that the video is going at, like, twice the regular speed. Um, I finally, finally hit upon a strategy that works for this level. This is the, the I'll Be Back level. Which we've already had three videos on. Um, this is a really, really hard scenario. As you can see, my guys here. What I did was I landed my guys after clearing out through the um, through the middle section. We landed our guys there on the very far western portion of the upper territory, and just started gained a foothold. We just sort of rushed the tower on the beach there, knocked it out. Now we've brought up our catapults and stuff to take out these towers up here on the um, the cliff face. Um, just you know, wiping them out. Yeah, this this is a really really hard. Well, we gotta go watch out for those priests, which I can't just hit with boulders. Um, what makes it so hard is you can't replenish your guys once you're. Once you're done, I mean, once you've lost a guy, you've pretty much lost him. I mean, I just lost so many dudes. You know, I mean, I tried to use the priests to convert people, but that really didn't work very well. I mean, the problem is that it takes so long to convert a guy that usually your other guys have either died or the guy, if you don't have any guys who are, you know, we, if you... Let me rephrase that. If you try and convert somebody... It takes so long that your other dudes who are protecting your priests have killed him already, or your priests are unprotected, in which case they get killed. And um, it, it's really slow to do, and it's really slow to recharge. So your priests end up not being able to convert guys very fast, which is really unfortunate. So you, you end up converting one guy... And then that's it, they're spent. You can't do anything else, you know, for like 45 seconds or a minute. In which case, by the time that happens, all the other potential guys who might conceivably be converted have been killed by your guys, or they've killed a bunch of your guys. You know, I mean, I, there'll be situations where I convert an archer, another archer shows up, and they it's mutual kill. They just kill each other. In which case, what a waste of time. So yeah, that strategy didn't work. Um, I tried just rushing all my guys over as fast as I could to assault the far eastern portion of this continent. That didn't work. I mean, there's like a ton of dudes over there. Just this, is, come come over here where there aren't that many guys. I mean, this is. I mean, they're primarily relying on their towers over here for defense, rather than their um, their armies, which is the way to go. Because the reality is, the towers can only attack like one guy. Their armies can attack like a hundred guys. Um, yeah, I got those guys up there. See, and then done. They will send dudes to attack you, but if you do it, play it right, like I'm doing right now. They just, you just bombard the whole thing. I think I lose my yeah, I lose my catapults right here. But it's okay because I've still got the ballistas, so I was able to. My so my progress slows down a little bit because I've lost both my catapults, which are the main siege engines, but um, I was able to use my ballistas for that. The main problem is that you're dealing with these very small little ledges to move your guys along, which means it's really easy for them to get, um, I'll see if I converted one of my ballistas there, which is really frustrating. It's really easy for them to get kind of jammed together, and I lost a dude there. Like I've said, I've complained in past videos about the pathfinding. AI on this game, and at, at this point, this is the sort of situation where it's really, really frustrating. Because it's like, okay, I need you to move out of the way so that I can, you know, move my other guys there. And you'll see me moving guys all around a lot, trying to get them out of the way. Because seriously, at this point, we're like, okay, if we just get through these towers, we can, um, we'll be within spitting right distance of the, the target. And there is a point at which, basically, I do get within the spitting distance of the target, but I end up 
losing anyway, so I have to reload. I've been I'm saving a lot. I think you'll see save screens pop up from time to time on this thing. Um, because I am saving quite a lot. I don't want to get in a situation where it's like, oh, all this progress that I've, wonderful progress that I've made has been lost. But yeah, just using the ballistas and with the elephant archers to soak up the damage to take down these towers is a pretty good strategy. And using the priests, I mean, the priests can convert, but it's a way, kind of the waste of their energy. Use them to heal. Like, I'll have them healing the ballistas to keep the ballistas in the game. So there we go, we're going to take down that tower. There's another archer, we're going to take him down. Yeah, use your, your cavalry to take care of any individual units that show up. So basically at this point, the way is I'm going to take down that tower. See, and, the, and the, another problem is the AI, there's no, there's no standard ground AI, so there's a tendency for them to just kind of, yeah, see, I'm moving guys around trying to get them and watch what happens with this ballista. It's just really... It's like, get out of the way, get out of the way, so that he can not like, move, move, move. Um, but there's no standard ground AI for the for the individual um, units, which means that they... Yes, I'm saving the game here. Okay. Yeah, and then... So there's no... You can't get them to stop attacking things, which ultimately results in them dying. And you're like, great, hey, thanks a lot, you know, dude. So they've almost defeated that tower. But yeah, it took me like five tries to defeat this level. I mean, I, I can only imagine what it's like to be some ten-year-old. I mean, maybe they've got more patience than I do, but it was like, I was just getting so frustrated. I'm like, this is... this is ridiculous. This is so ridiculous, it's redonkulous that I can't get through this level. Okay, so we've got those guys healing up that elephant. And elephants are always kind of a pain to heal because they're so... Okay, so this is the part I think where I die. All my guys die because I try and get up to the thing. Yeah, so there's another tower there. Well, they've done see they built a whole line of houses in the way that means you have to get near this tower in order to... Yeah, here's right. Here's where they, they bite it. Because what happens is yeah, a bunch of guys come up from the east and start attacking, at which point all my guys die. Yeah, see. Once I've lost my ballistas and my priests, it's over, basically. You don't even get that tower out of the way. Yeah, so I'm gonna load new, the game back up again from where I saved that before. Okay, yeah. But basically, we've got three more scenarios for Greece. I mean, this Greece campaign has been really, really. I don't want to say it's exhausting because it's a video game, but it has been kind of like patience trying, I guess, in the sense that it's, especially this level, where there's a lot of, you know, trial and error. Okay, we got to try this strategy, we got to try that strategy. What strategy is going to work? Um, and, and you don't know. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not obvious, but it's also not flexible. Right, I mean, there's basically one strategy that works for this. Because I actually I actually went and looked and see, did anyone else have any problems doing this level? And basically they all did the same thing that I'm doing here, which is kind of attacking from that part and, and you know, really getting all your guys across the middle area and then attacking across the, the gap. You know, so there's, there, there's one strategy for it, and it's like... If you don't know what that strategy is in advance, you're screwed. You know, it's like, oh, goody, you know. Let's see? So, yeah, so use your elephants to soak up damage, because they have a lot of hit points. They have, like, 600 hit points. I mean, that's more than a lot of buildings. But, um, yeah, use these guys, and then use your cavalry to take care of any individual you know, soldiers who come along. Yeah, so, yeah, so we destroyed that tower there, which means that the way into the center is now open, and what I decided to do, yeah, we use these guys to defeat those guys. I pull them back here so that they'll pull back so they're out of range of that tower. Away from 
and come up here. There they go. Alright, and the other problem that we have is, like, area of effect um, fire in the sense that things like ballistas and catapults will hurt your own guys if they I mean and they and again the AI is really frustrating because you can't tell them don't fire on your own people you know they, they'll they will right so what I just do is I smashed it uh, through this line of houses so I get up into the um, the temple there and we're gonna get in there. We're gonna attack the temple. And so they're attacking the temple there. Cutting their way through. And it's kind of ignore the workers around you. You don't need to kill them. They're not really doing anything of any importance. And then that's it. So that's finished there. And you send one of your cavalrymen up to seize the artifact. It kind of has to ignore this guy here. And bam, we're, we are victorious. So that's the end of that. Okay. So historical outcome. The Minoan culture went into decline around 1400 BC and was extinguished completely by 1100 BC. The cause of their dem demise is not clear, however. It may have been barbarians that overran much of the Mediterranean world around 1200 BC, or the violent eruption of Thera that devastated their economy, or an invasion by the mainland Mycenaeans. It is believed that around 1450 BC all of the Minoan palaces on Crete were destroyed. The destruction of ships and the loss of life following the cataclysmic explosion at Thera could have opened the door for the Mycenaeans, or the Mycenaeans could have grown strong enough to eventually to contest control of the Aegean outright. The culture on Crete and the, in the Aegean was a mixture of Minoan and Mycenaean influences for the next three centuries. Whatever the reason, the mainland Greeks gained the upper hand over the Minoans and the Aegean until all cultures in the area were swept away around 1200 BC. Okay, so that's the end of that guy. Okay, so we have a little breakdown of what we did here. Here's our timeline. Again, we didn't do spectacularly well. Oh, look at our military. We got like 99 kills. We killed a lot of their guys. Uh, raisings, losses, kill losses. We just had a huge score on the military there. Um, our economy was not great because we didn't have any villagers. Um, couldn't collect any gold, but we explored a lot. Religion, um, they had more conversions. I didn't even bother trying to convert anybody. Um, we survived, uh, technology survived at the end. Okay, so that was that episode. Uh, we're going to go see it for the Siege of Athens, and I will see you next time.